ladies and gentlemen good morning welcome to day 2 of sankalp 2020 i am amit bhatia founder and ceo of aspire impact and aspire circle and i will be your host every day for a 30 minute plenary session on our shared impact future in our 30 minutes on impact future today we have five inspiring leaders here to help you with safe landings in 1617 in venice Fausto Viranzio, at the age of 65, jumped from St. Mark's Campanile to test his invention of a parachute. His design was inspired by Leonardo da Vinci's rough sketches. Before him, in 1519, Paolo Guiditi had made an unsuccessful attempt and they come falling on a top of a roof with a broken thigh bone. Viranzio was the first to successfully perform an actual jump. This event in history prompted John Wilkins to write in his book, Mathematical Magics, about flying, which could be a reality. Foster, with his focus and deep interest in physics, engineering, and mechanics, is also credited with being the first to use renewable energy, which he has described in his book, Machine in a Way, written back in 1616. He used the concept of gravity and tides to run mills. The power of this idea, which was realized during the Renaissance period, has been recently re-engineered. He further drew proposals which predated the actual construction of modern suspension bridges, cable state bridges by over two centuries. Whereas he also designed the concept of modern day tie dark bridges, truss bridges and aerial lifts. I can't help but think of the 300 impact leaders at the Impact Future Project as Fausto Viranzios of Impact Renaissance. They are building bridges to our impact future, to the impact economy. They are creating frameworks for impact accounting. They're ensuring safe and successful landings for corporations in an era of impact capitalism. As part of the Impact Future Program, we will have each of our communities outline 10 truly transformative impact ideas, each capable of unlocking at least dollar $1 billion over the next decade and enabling corporations to compete in the new economy with a new impact DNA. So let's welcome five Fosto Viranzios who are ready to make us fly into the future. Our first speaker is Sairi Chahel, founder and CEO of Shiro's. Sairi founded Shiro's as a community platform for women, offering support, resources, opportunities, and interactions. She is credited with building up women at work and future of work conversations, building a strong technology play to solve problems of gender disparity, directly benefit over a million women, and with ambition to impact 100 million in the next five years. She too is an Aspen Fellow and a community leader at IFP's Gender Equality Women and Livelihoods Impact Community. Please welcome Sairi Chahel. Hi, my name is Sairi. I'm the founder of Shiro's and I'm here to talk about the future of impact in gender equality, livelihoods and women. Well, I think... Uh, we are a very interesting country. We are the country with one of the largest gender gaps in the world, but we are one of the largest internet populations in the world as well. So uh, we are all doing this online and there's a reason uh, for that. And that reason is also changing a lot of things uh, from where we see it. So for about five years, I've been building Shiro's. It's a company that's building what I call women's internet where women not only really find a safe space for themselves to grow, but also means of livelihood, entrepreneurship, and access to capital. And as I've built this company, I've realized that there are a few things that are happening and they're almost systemic in nature. I have never seen anything like that uh, anywhere in my career. And I think uh, this just might be one of those India first phenomena. So to put things in perspective, uh, 
we are a country that produces the maximum number of women graduates in the world but we are also a country that has one of the lowest number of women in workforce in the world so how do we get women up to par in this in this country you know and we have the aspiration of being a 5 trillion dollar economy how are we going to get there without women participating in it and i think uh, after being a little pessimistic for a long for a while i am hopeful that this will change on back of two significant trends one covid is accelerating our uh, digital in in more ways than one can imagine you guys might have heard a lot about it already but it's definitely accelerated adoption by women you know so just to give you a perspective our network which in february before the lockdown happened was at 16 17 million women uh by the time we you know we got to june it was already 20 21 million women and that's the fastest growth we've seen on our network but it's not just the growth of users what we are also seeing is growth in what they are doing you know so a couple of trends that are very very marky one is the creators economy each one of us is going to be a creator and i think the first time internet users and women in particularly are very big on that so i'm sure all of you have seen a lot of poetry platforms come up literature platform come up vernacular platforms come up and that's exactly what they're representing the creators economy using your skill to make an income the second is i think micro entrepreneurship and this is for the first time the lines between rural women and urban women are blurring so some estimates say there are about 15 to 17 million women in this country who are micro entrepreneurs these are women who do not run a factory or a service company or uh, neither they are farmers these are women who run a small establishment typically not registered but they are self employed they also typically employ another person and a half or two uh, in their own uh, you know system and these 15 to 17 million women are set to become 30 to 35 million women uh in the next 2 to 3 years which means we are going to see a growth of solopreneurs women who run their own businesses women who run beauty parlors and offer uh local services and internet's enabling all of that i mean there are companies being built in in all all of these segments and interestingly these 35 million micro entrepreneurs are going to employ a population of anywhere between 150 million to 170 million in the next 2 to 3 years and that's a big bet for all of us who who follow the space who follow internet who follow gender who follow livelihoods who follow internet and uh, and all of this is going to happen in a digital context so and india is one of the most sophisticated payment stack now an insurance stack there's going to be a india health stack uh, so i think uh, some amazing things are happening in the space but a lot of gender equality livelihoods uh, is going to ride the digital wave uh women are going to use internet to cross the gender gap and india is not going to get into the 5 trillion dollar economy on back of jobs it's going to get into the 5 trillion dollar economy on back of micro entrepreneurship particularly by women so watch these 15 million women become 35 million women as entrepreneurs uh changing the texture of how we consume produce and transact in this economy and that's that's really my big bet and i'm happy to share that with you and and we can check back in a couple of years here so thank you thank you sairi our next speaker will rock the impact world as he's on a quest to ensure all companies get to an impact earnings per share He is Professor George Serafim, professor at Harvard Business School, who leads the Impact Weighted Financial Accounts Initiative. He appropriately teaches a course on reimagining capitalism, which received the Ideas Worth Teaching Award and the Grant Page Prize. He has presented his research in over sixty countries and ranks amongst the top ten most popular authors out of over twelve thousand business authors on the Social Science Research Network. I personally believe that he is leading the academic movement in the impact revolution. Please welcome Professor George Serafi. Hello, my name is George Serafi, 
and I'm the Charles M. Williams Professor of Business Administration at Harvard Business School. And I'm also the chair of the Impact Weighted Accounts Initiative. What we're doing with Impact Weighted Accounts is redefining what success, profit and value means in society. We need to create a system that is more inclusive and more sustainable. We need to take into account not only the impacts that we're having on physical, manufactured and financial capital, but also on the social capital, on the human capital, on the natural capital as well. Doing so requires rigorous impact measurement and reflection in the financial statements framework so we can understand a holistic, in a holistic way what profit means and what value means. We have been working on this, measuring impact in a systematic way as it relates to environmental impact, but also in terms of employment impact and product impact, the way that you're impacting your customers and the local communities, but also the way that you're interacting with your employees and the labor community as well. What we're finding so far is fascinating. We observe that different companies have very different impacts, with some companies having a tremendously positive impact, while other companies having tremendously negative impact. So far, those impacts have been obscured. They have been hidden. And as a result, companies have hidden assets, but also hidden liabilities. As a result, those impacts over time get sometimes internalized by companies, but over the very long term. So what we're trying to do now is we're trying to create impact transparency, but also impact integrity. So we know how to allocate capital in the most productive organizations that actually take into account all of their stakeholders. But at the same time, we're empowering policymakers and regulators around the world to incentivize the creation of positive impact and to punish the creation of negative impact. And while doing that, we are hoping to empower corporate management with the tools to make better decisions. Because when you make better decisions for your customers, your employees, and your impacts on the environment, many times you start innovating as an organization and finding ways to actually conduct business in a better way. So I think we have entered an era of an impact transparency and more broadly, an impact revolution that is reshaping capitalism. We see entrepreneurs like yourselves every day creating new business models, new companies, new investment opportunities. And as a result, we need a systematic way of identifying those opportunities and rewarding them by allocating capital. That is not going to happen from one day to the next. It is a journey and will take some time, but we are now seeding these efforts, creating the framework and the data and the transparency through which we can make more systematic progress moving forward. As part of our data sets, that all of them are open access on our website at Harvard Business School under Impact Weighted Accounts, you can also find data on a series of Indian companies as well. We're hoping that that level of transparency is going to really spar a wave of innovation for impact measurement and transparency and impact investing around the world. Thank you very much and I'm looking forward to joining you in that impact transparency and that impact journey. Thank you, George. Our third speaker today is another friend from my Aspen world and co-winner of the John P. McNulty Prize, Bart Hollohan, co-founder of B-Labs. B-Labs started in 2006, which Bart co-founded with his colleagues, Jay Cohen Gilbert and Andrew Kasoy. B-Labs is a nonprofit organization ensuring business becomes a force for good as certified B Corps. Bart is a Henry Crown Fellow at the Aspen Institute and a recipient of the 2014 Skoll Award for Social Entrepreneurship. 
when global leaders like Emmanuel Faber, CEO of Danone, stand on public stage and say their aspiration is to get Danone fully certified as a B Corp by 2025, B Labs and Bart need no further introduction. Please welcome Bart Halohan. Greetings from Philadelphia. My name is Bart Houlihan. I am one of the co-founders of B-Lab. B-Lab is the nonprofit behind the B Corporation movement. For those of you who don't know the B Corporation movement, we're a community of business leaders who are trying to build a movement of people using business as a force for good. Our vision is in a generation's time to create a more equitable, inclusive, and regenerative economy, one that works for everyone. Our approach is really straightforward. We find leaders, uh, best-in-class companies whom we certify as B corporations. The B stands for the benefit that they create for all stakeholders. To certify as a B corporation, you have to do three things. You have to take and pass an impact assessment that evaluates your impact on the community, your workers, the environment, your governance practices, and your consumers. Secondly, you need to make sure that that commitment to stakeholders is built to last through a legal change. You have to amend your corporate governing documents to include the interests of all stakeholders and be accountable to them. Third and finally, you have to be transparent. You have to share not only your areas of excellence, but also your areas for improvement. If you do those three things, you can join this community of leaders. We have about 3,600 certified B corporations from 150 different industries, 80 different countries. The commonality is they're all using business as a force for good. They range from uh, multi-billion dollar companies down to sole proprietors, some that you would know, uh, Danone, North America, the uh, dairy giant, Patagonia, the outdoor apparel maker, uh, Natura Cosmetics out of Sao Paulo, uh, the cosmetic conglomerate that owns both Body Shop and Avon, or Kickstarter. Just some examples of our community. In our job at B-Lab is to shine a light on those leaders and encourage others to follow. And we provide tools, tools for companies to be more like a B Corporation. The impact assessment we use for certification, well, it, it's a public good. It's free and available for any, anybody to use. It includes uh, best practice guides and the ability to set targets so that you can confidentially measure, manage, and improve your social and environmental performance. Oh, more than 130,000 companies have now used that tool as a roadmap or a guideline to improve their practices. The second scaling tool that we provide is that legal framework that we require all certified B corporations to adopt. Well, it turns out in many jurisdictions around the globe, it is against current corporate law to consider the interest of stakeholders. And so we had to pass a new legally recognized corporate form something called the Benefit Corporation. We've passed that in about six countries and uh, 40 states here in the U.S. And it changes fiduciary duty so that companies are legally accountable to consider all stakeholders. There are now more than 10,000 companies globally that have become benefit corporations. Right now, uh, the momentum in this, mov in this movement is... Um, overwhelming. Our registrations are up year over year by 80%. Demand from multinationals is greater than ever before. And I think you can trace that back to three fundamental existential threats facing the business sector. First is climate change. Um, clearly, climate change is accelerating and placing true risks to the business community that haven't been felt before. Secondly, rising inequality. Uh, inequality is not new, but it is clearly accelerating. Uh, currently, sadly, two-thirds of the world's population owns less than 3% of its assets. 
And so though we have faced inequality for millennia, it is acute currently. And third and finally, uh, this pandemic, uh, the global pandemic has laid bare the inequities of our current system. And more and more, we hear from business leaders and governmental leaders that we're not trying to return to normal, but when we come out of this pandemic, we need to create a new normal. And so I guess what I would ask all of you today is how are you going to engage in this movement? I would tell you that more and more, your consumers are going to demand it of you. They, they are expecting business globally uh, to balance social interests with business interests. Your workers are going to demand authentic engagement. And so not only is this going to be uh, the right thing for you to do from a business perspective, I would tell you it's also a moral imperative. The threats we face are profound and require the private sector to engage to a greater degree. So I, I hope you all will join us. Thank you again for having me and enjoy the rest of your conference. Our fourth speaker of the day is my good friend, philosopher and guide, Nishad Desai. Nishad Bhai is the founder of international law firm Nishad Desai Associates. A renowned lawyer, researcher, author, lecturer, philanthropist, he specializes in the financial services sector and has assisted the governments of India and Mauritius to set up the offshore financial centers. After India opened up the economy to the outside world in 1991, he established the first five India-focused funds and pioneered the roots of asset management industry. NDA has been voted the most innovative Indian law firm four years in a row by Financial Times. Nishit Pai has been a partner to me through IIC and GSG Journeys. He's also a supporter of IFP. Please welcome Nishit Desai. Greetings from uh, Nishit Desai here. Uh, all my friends at Sankalp uh, community, world at whole to be talking with you. Amit, congratulations on launching Impact Futures project and committing 10 years of your life, next 10 years of your life, major commitment. Impact and ESG are the two buzzwords, I would say not buzzword, but the new expressions of the future economy have become so important today. 10 years ago when I spoke about impact, spoke about ESG, very few people understood. But today, I think it's talk of the town. Whether I go to Davos, whether I speak at some other conferences, or wherever I go here, that when I talk to our clients, I think they are all becoming aware of impact and ESG. Thanks to the institutional LP community, thanks to many other investors who have really pushed this agenda of impact into the private equity and venture capital ecosystem. The amount of benefit that impact can bring to the society is enormous. I was just looking at the report by Portfolio Earth on bank rolling extinction okay bank rolling extinction and it said 2.6 trillion dollars have been invested in the projects which have caused economic devastation and wildlife you know uh, wildlife destruction you know, look at in one single year 2019 we have invested so much in the projects that are creating negative impact is it not important for us to pay more attention on this particular aspect? There are so many dimensions, whether it is financial services sector, whether it is manufacturing, whether it is services, so and so forth. And, you know, all these activities of our economic life, really we need to rethink the whole new world. In fact, do we need to construct roads and bridges to the extent to which we have done in the past, or we use things like drones, which can overcome the, the topographical difficulty that may be faced. 
but in the process of creating infrastructure at times you also end up destructing the environment i'm not against in, uh, infrastructure but at the same time we have to be very careful and i mean the project that you undertaken to educate people on impact assessment impact accounting impact uh, you know impact uh, uh, ecosystem corporate education the board needs to understand the esg and the uh, sustainability issues and i think it's happening but i think we have to accelerate the sp the speed of the whole um impact uh, you know uh, activity so i'm very very happy i mean that you have undertaken this project my delight uh, that you have done this and i'm always excited to support you always excited to support sankal who i think the kind of thing that you are doing is very important very important very critical and i wish you all the best thank you thank you nishit bhai finally i want to invite vedika bhandarkar chief global impact officer at water.org to close our day 2 of envisioning our shared impact future vedika oversees all impact initiatives at water.org and leads the team responsible for working with investors to empower millions of people in need with access to safe water and sanitation she previously served as water.org's managing director in india prior to joining water.org back in 2016 vedika served as vice chair and managing director of credit suisse immediately before that she was head of investment banking at jp morgan like our impact movement she truly stands for and believes in uniting profits with purpose please welcome vedika bhandarkar Hello, my name is Vedika Bhandarkar, and I am the Chief Global Impact Officer for Water.org. We are a not-for-profit, exclusively focused on enabling access to safe water and sanitation for those living at the base of the economic pyramid. I'm really excited to be a part of the launch of the Impact Future Project, and genuinely believe that this is the time. It's the right time now to have these discussions and this collaboration. to solve the biggest challenges that the world faces today. The last 8 months as the world has been facing the pandemic and continues to face the pandemic, it's become extremely clear, it's become extremely urgent that all the stakeholders need to get together, whether it's the governments, whether it's the financial institutions, whether it's the multilateral or bilateral agencies, whether it's the corporations, the investors and the civil society they all need to come together and act right now the good news is that a combination of a regulatory push a combination of demand and pressure from uh, the investors from the consumers from the employees uh, as well as from the communities themselves is making this collaboration happen and now it is up to all of us to really uh, make it make this effort uh, to cause it to snowball and and to cause it to multiply and to innovate so now i'd like to talk about the community which is closest to my heart and this is the community for water sanitation and hygiene access or wash and wastewater management the world bank estimates that about 114 billion dollars per year is required to be spent by the world between 2016 and 2030 to enable access to safe water and sanitation for all or enable achievement of sdg 6 the amount of money that the world spends per year currently is just under 30 billion so the gap between the 114 billion required and the 30 billion spent is huge and this gap can only be met again through collaboration through innovations and blending and on top of that you add the impact of uh, water scarcity and you add the impact of climate change the un estimates that already 40% of the world's population is facing the issue of water scarcity and this percentage is only going to increase over time in india in the last few years huge strides have been made in wash area 
with the success of the Swachh Bharat Mission and the ongoing Jal Jeevan Mission. It's now important that we turn our attention to one, sustaining the gains which have already been made in terms of open defecation free. Two, uh, we focus on wastewater treatment. Three, we focus on water reservoir management. Four, we focus on efficient water usage. Five, we focus on replenishing existing water resources, including rainwater harvesting. Uh, and six, we focus on water quality, including fecal sludge management. So here are some ideas for the community, uh, the WASH community to think about and to innovate on. First, um, how can we continue, how can we make a step change in terms of improving the efficiency of water usage in agriculture? Remember, 80% of water usage in India is currently in agriculture. Two, how can we reduce wastage of water? How can we stop those leaky pipes from leaking? Now that seems like a very old fashioned problem and your question might be, why does it need innovation? Well, the point is that these pipes do leak right now. Uh, there's very high percentage of uh, non-revenue water. And if we can solve this through efficient contracting, through uh, public-private partnerships, or through technology, we can address two big issues. We can address the issue of water availability, as well as we can address the issue of reducing greenhouse emissions. Three, how can we think about waste water management much more holistically? So far, we've been focusing a lot on industries, but how can we think about uh, wastewater management and recycling for all the units, right? How can we think about it for commercial systems? How can we think about it for households? And bring the uh, point about circularity. And fourth, uh, how can we scale? How can the corporates and investors get together to scale what are fantastic innovations and really bring them to scale so that they become much more affordable. A good example would be using the atmospheric water, the water which is in the atmosphere, and converting it into portable drinking water. How can we take this technology to scale, make it much more affordable, so that its, you know, the, its reach is equitable and increases the resilience of the communities? I could go on and on, but I'm sure there are many such ideas that you will talk about. I wish you all the very best and look forward to hearing more. Thank you. Thank you, Vedika. Friends, thank you for being with us. Please join me once again in thanking Sairi, George, Bart, Nishikpai, and Vedika once again. Tomorrow, from 11 a.m. to 11.30 a.m., once again, you will have five great leaders for five minutes each, a rare treat. Till then, from all of us at Aspire Impact and Aspire Circle, safe landings.